Hey folks, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we're talking about clip labels, Premiere versus Avid. Let's do it. Hey folks, okay, one of the biggest organizational things that you can do is to label your clips, aka color your clips, so that you can tell the difference between your clips in the timeline and in the bin. Let's get started with Premiere. Right here I've got a bin of Philadelphia Skylines that I want to cut into my sequence. And let's say I'm looking through and I want to label my favorite ones. I like that one. That one's even slightly better. That one's a little muted, right? So I'm going to double click this and I want to mark this clip. Let's say I want, I want to know that this is the one that I want to use out of all of these. I can come over here and right click, go all the way down to label. And then I've got these labels down here that I can choose from. Let's say I want it to be orange. There we go. Now I can easily discern the clip I like from the other clips. I do this a lot with music especially. I'll go through a music bin of a ton of music clips and I will label the ones that I like for using in the project. That way I don't have to look through them all again. You can even sort them right by clip color by coming up here right next to name, right to the side. I could sort that. If I had this one, let's say I, I wanted that one labeled orange as well and I click right here, I can sort them all to the top or all to the bottom. So I've got the ones that I want to sift right up to the top, just like that. And then I can cut it into my timeline. So if you look here, let's say all of a sudden right here over my cousin Barack, I wanted to show the Philadelphia skyline right there. I could just go ahead and set my in and my out. I'm gonna put my selector up there because I uh, on the V2 track and then I'm gonna hit overwrite. I'm not gonna drag it into my track because I'm not a barbarian. I hit overwrite or splice in, which I have mapped to the F9 and F10 keys, but you do you. So here it is in the timeline right here. And then I can manipulate it. Obviously you don't want it to look like that. Although I see a lot of TikTokers who do that and a lot of Instagrammers who do, who do this and just throw the B-roll right up there. Why not make it cover the whole picture? You can make it cover the whole picture, influencers, just FYI. That's just me. So anyway, there it is. But let's say once I get it in here, I'm like, well, I want to be able to tell my still images from my moving B-roll. So there's a picture of Flurry, rest in peace, such a good dog, Flurry right there. And Flurry is orange and this is a still image and it's also orange. I can change that color once it's in the timeline very easily by coming over to the clip, right clicking, going back down to label. And let's say, oh, let's choose light purple. Now, well, I've got, now, now, now that is the same color as all my other graphics, right? And if I didn't want that color, I could come down here and I could say, you know what? Really, I want it to be like light blue. There we go. Now I can tell that all my, and then I can come up here and I can say, yeah, all right, let's make all these pictures light blue. So changing them light blue here in the bin does not affect the clips here, right? Watch, I can come up here, right click, go down to label, and I can choose beige. Beige, right there, see? Right down the line, beige did not affect that clip here. Once the clip is in the timeline, it's married to the color that it is until you come over, right click, and change it, right? Uh, now it's pink. What if I wanted to make all of these pink? This clip, that clip, and these two clips, three clips right there. I can just select those clips, right click, choose label, and say red. Red, now they all look like they're offline. Why would I do that? I don't know, I'm crazy. But if, you, if you're looking at me thinking, how did you get beige? How did you get brown? How did you get red as label colors? In Premiere, you can change what the label colors are and do. Come over here, go up to settings, go to labels in your settings right there labels in your settings now you call up this dialog box right here this dialog box allows you to change the colors if i double click or maybe if i just single click yeah just a single click didn't need to double click that was one extra click 
or nothing. So you can come over here and you can change what the color is. You can reset all these colors. You can also click in here and rename all these colors. I did that immediately because I don't know what cerulean is as a color. And yet Premiere gave that to me natively. Is cerulean different than forest? Is mango different from yellow? I don't know. I don't care. I want to know what it is really easily. So I renamed all of mine to be what they actually are. And not calling them cerulean was the first step in saving my sanity. Then you can come over here and you can change your label defaults. I like, I like all my video to natively just default to blue. I want my audio to default to light green. I'd like my still images to default to purple. I want my sequences to default to a label green. That's just me. You do you, but this is where you change it in preferences under labels. The interesting thing about Premiere, I may be playing fast and loose with the word interesting, is that you cannot set the color by track. I Googled it. I couldn't find it. I come over here and I right click. I don't have an option to change an entire track number or track color rather. It just is the track is and it's going to default to whatever your clip color is. That's going to be what it is. Now I could come here and say, well, I want everything on V3 to be orange, which it is predominantly orange right now because this is where my B-roll is because I do have some two camera stuff here. So I had my main camera be V1 and V2. So here it is as orange. And so most of it's orange. If I wanted to trade to make it all be orange across the line, I could come over here, select it all, right click anywhere on one, one of the clips, just right click on it and label it and change them all to orange that way. And in that way, I can get my tracks to be all the same color if that's what I wanted. Maybe that's not what I want. That's totally fine too. I'm just showing you, you've got that option. Things work a little differently in Avid. Similar, but different. Follow me over there. Here we go. This is how you do it. First of all, I don't have the label or the color track up here. So what I need to do is I need to go either to bin, choose columns, right? Which pulls up this ability to choose what columns are up here or I can right click uh, anywhere in the bin and go to choose columns, usually. I can't find it right now off the top. There it is, down there, choose columns. And then that pops this up. Uh, so here's this, all none, and let's choose our columns. We want color, that's label. Color is label. Uh, in Avid, it's color. In Premiere, it's label. So let's take color. Let's take duration. Let's take end. Let's take, uh, just for chuckles, start. Why not? And say, okay. Now here's color. I like my color to be here at the beginning. That's just me. That's where I like it. So here's color and here are our clips. So here's like two baseball clips, right? Let's say uh, I want to color those clips a certain color. I'm going to right click and that will call up this. If I, if I want, I can just choose a color and then boom, it's a color. Or I right click again, I choose here. Now I get the crayon picker or the color wheel or this, but you know I like the crayon picker. I mean, come on, who doesn't like a crayon picker? And sit, boom, now I've colored them purple. And then here's two more baseball clips. And let's, I'm going to color those, uh, let's color those, I don't know, chroma key green. And then here's Denny, uh, Denny iPhone. Let's color that, uh, I don't know, dark blue, I guess, cobalt blue, sort of dark purple. It's hard to say. At any rate, there you go. And you can sort them by color by clicking on color and doing command E, command E, or if you're on a PC, it's control E, or you can come up here to bin and say sort, sort, see, command E, there you go. Uh, so uh, now we've sorted by color, right? So you can sort by color just like you can do in Premiere. Notice though, notice though, it doesn't change any of the clip colors, right? So same as Premiere, once it's in, it's in. Uh, so let's double click on this baseball clip. This is kind of a pinkish, really. And, and let's cut that in right here. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna overwrite that right there in that place. So I've got V1 to V2, V1 from there, V2 from there. I'm gonna overwrite it there by hitting B as in boy. Now I've overwritten and look, it does not retain that color. Interesting. This is how this is how Premiere or this is how Avid works. It does not retain that color, right? So this is interesting because this is how Avid works. If I want to see the clip color in my timeline view, so all the colors I've chosen for all the different clips, right? Here's a piece of music. I'm gonna right click in there. Let's you know, let's get a nice kind of like mustardy color going for that. Eh, let's let's get something that's dissimilar to what we got. There we go, a little mint green kind of thing. Uh, okay, so uh, here we are. I don't see any of those colors reflected in my timeline. Come all the way down, follow the bouncing ball, all the way down to down here, to this fast menu right down here. I'm gonna click on there, and I'm going to say clip color clip color from that fast menu. Here's the clip color. Now, red for offline. I like to leave that alone. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me whether it's proxy or not. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Mixed frame rates, sometimes those are important if they're important to you and you want to know what's wh which frame rate, you can see the color coding for that. Uh, but I, for our purposes right now, no. SD, HD, I don't use a lot of SD and when I do it's archival and then I want it marked as archival. What I want is source, source. That's what we want, source right there. Make sure that's checked and say, okay, then look what happens. Now all the colors change. Now Denny iPhone is the same color. Denny iPhone is there, it's that dark blue or cobalt blue or deep purple. You know, so now everything is reflecting the colors here. So if you like your timeline that way, where whatever colors you choose for your clip is the color it shows up in your timeline, that is the only way to do it. Now, there is an alternate way to view colors in your timeline. So I, in general, in Avid, don't care about the color of the clip at all whatsoever, unless it's offline. What I want to do is I want to set it by track. So my V1 track, I want to be all one color. My V2 track, I want it to be a different color. And the same with all of my audio tracks. I want my audio tracks to reflect. I want my A1, if I have VO, to be a certain color and on and on like that. You cannot do this in Premiere. I repeat, you cannot do this in Premiere at all. Come down here again, follow the bouncing ball to this fast menu all the way down here. Then go to track color, track color. Now I'm going to choose a track color, but first I have to be mindful of what track is lit up, right? So this doesn't matter. That just goes to the source. That doesn't matter. You want to be concerned with this side, the blue side, not the green side, blue, blue. So I'm going to come over here and I like my V1 layer to be a, a kind of a, a brownish basic color. So I'm going to come over here to track color and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get my little crayon picker and I'm going to choose like a brownish color, but that's a little too dark for me. So once I've chosen that color, I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit and I'm going to make it a little more, I want it a little more beigey to be honest. There we go, like a little beige-ish kind of thing right there. Uh, I can also eyedropper a color too. I'm gonna say, okay. And now, uh, and that, by the way, you don't see reflected here. That is because when we go back to clip color, go back to clip color, I wanna take off source and say timeline local and then say, okay. Now, Oh, these are reversed in color for me. So I wanted this color to be the V1, but I see I picked badly. But so now timeline local is going to be dependent on the colors I choose per track, right? So now I'm back out here and uh, let's change that. Ah, we'll have a nice coffee brown there. Uh, so there's a nice coffee brown. Now let's make the V2 track uh, let's make the V2 track like a, like a kind of a yellowy color. 
right? Let's come over here and, oh, there we go. And then we can, and you can do more than one track at a time, right? I can, if I have A2 and A3 lit up and I go to track color, I can choose, uh, I don't know, how about that color green? There we go. Look at that. So, uh, after you have chosen track colors, this isn't, doesn't count for clip colors, right? If you like, I like to have my tracks colored, makes it easy for me to find what track I'm on at any one time. That's how I like to work in Avid. That's me. You do you. But if you have set your track colors, right? And let's set these, let's set this right here, uh, six and seven. Let's go down here to track color and let's, I don't know, let's make it that blue color. That was a purple color. My vision is off today. So there we go. So now that I've saved that, now that I have that, we need to save it. So come all the way back down here with the bouncing ball down to here. And I'm going to say save as. Now I've already saved this track. It's called usual. I can rename it, right? And I can say, let's call this a uh, track color view. And I say, okay. Now, when I go back to usual, ah, usual doesn't have my track colors, right? When I go to A2 huge, that doesn't have my track colors because I only just saved it. I saved it before I saved all these other ones. So they're not gonna retain my colors. Now I've got my colors back when I go back to track color. So if you're gonna set tracks by color, if you're that kind of person, and you might be, uh, you need to make sure to save it. I usually start, if I'm doing my settings from zero, let's say I go to a company that has a whole different version of Avid and I had to reset all of my settings, or I work on a Mac and I'm going to a place that's got a PC. Now I have to redo all my settings. I'm gonna set my track colors first, then I'm gonna save that as uh, probably called usual, right? Um, and then, uh, and then I'm going to build all my other track settings from there because now all my track colors are down there. Uh, worth noting, right? If I got a little fluff floating about, if I come over here and I go back to track color and let's say, um, let's say I change my V1 track. I'm like, that's too dark. I want it to be a little bit lighter. Let's go to track color. I'm going to pick, I don't know, this orange color. Uh, perfect. And, uh, and if you notice, come back down here, you notice track color is italicized and it's got a one after it, a dot one after it. If I go save as right there, and I want that to always be the way I see my tracks, right? I can delete that one, delete that dot, say, okay. And then it asks me, right? Replace existing track color. Yes, let's replace that setting. So now my track color, if I go to V1 huge, didn't save, but here's track color. There it is. Now it will always be orange there. That's how you do that. You can, again, set things by a uh, clip color. Turn off timeline local, turn on source, say, okay, it's all back. But I want to caution you that under clip color, if you have mixed rates on, those will, whatever the mixed rates are, will override, I guess I don't have those here, <coughs> excuse me, that will override your clip color settings. So just keep that in mind. If mixed rates is turned on and you have mixed rates in your timeline, it will overrule whatever your clip color here is. So keep that in mind. You want mixed rates off or you want them on because you want to be able to easily identify them when they crop up in your timeline. That's fine. Uh, but if you want it pure and you want to label all your clips and you want your clips by label, then uh, turn that off, turn on source, and you're good to go. Bob's your uncle. That's it. That's Clip Color in Avid and Premiere. I hope you liked it as much as I liked bringing it to you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to check my link in the bio or the link underneath if you're watching this on YouTube.